You're very welcome to the Lanxess Arena in Cologne for this, the Velux EHF Final Four. It is Paris Saint-Germain handball versus handball club Varder of Macedonia in the gold medal match to see who will win the Champions League this season. It's been a long, long, long road. Telecom Vesprem won the bronze medal earlier on today by four goals, beating Barcelona 34 to 30. The crowd from France are in, waving. There's got to be 2,000, 3,000 of them away to my left. The fans from Varda are in. Two million. The entire country is watching them at home. The entire country of Macedonia is gathered around their television set today to cheer on these boys who have made history the first ever Macedonian club in the Champions League final. You cannot say that about Paris. There have been French teams here before. French teams have won it. Montpellier, way back when. This is going to be some game. Will Raul uh, Gonzalez take off the shackles, let his team play? We have to wait and see. Yesterday was such a chess match against Barcelona. Paris, on the other hand, never going to change the way they play. One against one, leave it up to the stars. They'll find the answers when they need the answers. Will Sterbik be able to play another six minutes today? 60 minutes, I should say, and put on a performance. Will Omayer shine like he always does in these big matches? I mean, it's endless. Will Hansen score another seven goals today? Will Gensheimer? Will Sindrich perform the way he did yesterday? Nerves will play a huge part. And by the way, both of these teams will be nervous. So much at stake today. So much at stake in the gold medal match. The two coaches, Noka Serdorusic, well, he looks like he's got sang froid. He, well, he'd say something else in German because he doesn't speak French. He's got cold blood, ice blood running through his veins. Raul Gonzalez, well, he's Spanish. He's not going to be as relaxed. That court just, that blue court is welcoming them on. The opening show is due to start any moment soon, but the fans are already in high voice. They're just coming back in from, like I said, their apres match from the first game, which, if you missed it, was a nice game to watch. Some nice handball, not the hardest, most physical game, more of an exhibition game. Well, every single Paris fan, fan has, got a, has got a Paris flag. Look at that. The arena is going into darkness. We're getting ready. If the show is anything like the last one, a little bit of Ennio Morricone, a little bit of the good, the bad, and the ugly music, I'm ready for that. Sit back, relax, enjoy.
Well, I'll tell you what, Mel C looks absolutely fantastic and sounds even better. The next best superstar could be someone today. Nice vocal, great song. Well, the referees are introduced to the crowd now. They are from Germany. It's Lars Geibel and Marcus Helbig. And we wish them the very, very best of luck in what is a tough, tough place to referee anyway. And in a very, very important game. It is the gold medal match of the Velux EHF Final Four. And Paris Saint-Germain is the first team to be introduced to the crowd. And the Lynx comes first, the Paris mascot carrying the flag. And it's two against Simon, seven goals yesterday for the left wing. Henrik Molgaard, he is the Dane who came on, on loan originally, but signed permanently, great defender. William Acombre, he's moving to West Ham next season, hasn't featured much this season, but is a dangerous guy if they play him. Then it is Lucas Stepanchic, one goal yesterday for the right wing, and he kind of forgot his lines there, nearly didn't come out of the tunnel. Cuckooed the right winger, well, he had one chance yesterday, and stood inside and missed his goal, which gave West Bremen a sniff, which ultimately they couldn't take. Then after him, Gorad Skop, the second goalkeeper of the team. Barache behind him, the right back, he's moving on, hasn't featured much this season. Then Thierry Omeyer gets a huge cheer from the crowd here because, of course, played so long with GHW Kiel. Remily, number three. Uh, sorry, Remily, three goals yesterday. Then Luca Balo, two goals yesterday for the right winger. Then one of the Karabatic boys, it's the young guy. Luca Karabatic, one goal yesterday. Then number 24, Mikkel Hansen. Gees himself up, gets one of the biggest cheers of the day. He really is a superstar of handball. Then the man who strolls out is Daniel Nassis, captain of Paris Saint-Germain, three goals yesterday. Came from Berlin, Jesper Nielsen, the Swede. Two goals in the game and came on at a vital time for them on the line, did very well. Nikola Karabatic, world player of the year, but um, only scored one goal yesterday, but a vital goal at a vital moment. And then finally, Poor Dillon Nahi, <laughs> being introduced after all of those guys. A good luck to him, the 17-year-old, in his in the Velux EHF Final Four gold medal match. Well, there's their mascot. Arpad Sterbik, well, he's not sprinting on, that's for sure. Then it's Stoyanchi Stoilov, and he ain't sprinting on either. No, I'm just kidding, he's a great player. The Macedonian line player, then Milic. The, he's a young guy, is Milic, he's only 26, stands two metres tall, but he's big. Then Morais uh, Rogério, he is the line player from Brazil. Then the right back from Maqueda from Spain, who generally only plays defence now. 
Then the Russian, Derevan, Alex Derevan, was looking like a great player, injured his knee last season and hasn't really been back. Then Igor Karacic, well, they've got to be nervous coming in. Then Alex Duchabayev, seven goals yesterday. Igor Karacic before him, only two. Abudovic, what a defender he was yesterday. In the 5-1 particularly, but all round, he's really come on so much. Kanyelias, no score yesterday, but did a good job for them. Then comes Lukas Indrich, biggest cheer of the day for him by that amazing goal he scored. 1 meter 85 he stands, and he scored four. Then Ivan Cupic, I think Ivan's even smaller, he scored seven. And Dibirov, not a tall team by any stretch of the imagination. Then comes Daniel Shishkarev, uh, the right winger from Russia. He's a bit taller from the right wing. Then Borozan, this guy's a giant. Borozan got five yesterday. And another giant, 93, is Mihailo Marcinic. 24 years of age, 31 goals in the Champions League, but didn't score yesterday. Well, I have to say, I like that. I like that Mel C song. Next, next best superstar could be somebody here today. She could have been singing it to me. Champions League anthem plays, and after that, the fair play and answer will be read, and then it's uh, pretty much they got to say hello to each other, and then let battle commence. Milic there, got to be happy, Dedevan, not much emotion there, look at Mora, he's focused. Stedevic, and he's won it so many times. Stoilov, so happy. The two referees, let's mention them again, Lars and Marcus, Kuypen and Helbig, they are two of Germany's top referees, and it's great to see them here today. And there's another German, Uwe Gensheimer, a day beside him, Henrik Mul uh, Mulgaard, Combre, Stepancic, the Croat, Kukud, French, Valaché, French, French, Remeli, French, Abalo, French, Luka Karabatic, French, another Dane, a Swede, a Frenchman, another Frenchman, and a Slovenian. Well, at least, at least Paris Saint-Germain are going with the French team, but when you look at that French team, they are Olympic champions, world champions, Euro champions, all the way through it. Thank you, Edith, once again. The referees, well, I'll tell you, they both wear glasses. And I understand myself, you're wearing glasses, you see a little bit more. And they're gonna see, need to see everything today. They, they move along, they high-five each other, and that is where the good-naturedness is gonna end. Because these guys are rocking, they're rolling, the arena is rocking and rolling. The gold medal match for the Velux EHF final four. Due to start at six, uh, it's been a, it's run over, run a little bit, but it doesn't matter because, uh, well, I can get this party started. Absolutely, let's get this party started. There's the match ball, Paris Saint-Germain versus Varder. And very quickly, I would imagine Omayer will start. Uwe Gensheimer will play left wing in attack. Molgard will definitely play defense. Akombre, Dowdy will feature. Stepancic will play right back, but maybe not from the beginning. Kukud will be behind Abalo in the right wing position. Parache only if they need him. Remeli, for sure, he will play. Abalo, for sure, he'll start. Luka Karabatic, excellent all season, he'll start. So will Hansen. Narcisse, well, he can change for Nikola Karabatic. Jesper Nielsen, he'll come on at some stage. Nikola Karabatic, this could be his day. And finally, Dylan Nahi. Well, who are we going to watch out for in Varder? Well, He's not going to be able to make three changes against his Paris team because they will run it from the line. They will run it. They will run it. Uwe Gensheimer, he'll have a field day. Hansen will have a field day. Karabatic will have a field day if these guys change three defenders. Makeda, Derevan won't feature. Igor Karacic may feature at some stage. They're going to need Borazan against this French team. 
They're going to need power. Danielias, well, he's clever, this guy. Sindrich, amazing player in the centre. Cupid's great white wing. Uh, Dibirov on the left wing, always clever. Shishkara, well, he hasn't got a sniff. He's, he's been sharing the time. But uh, right now, they've gone for him because of his size. That's it. They've decided he's a better option than Cupid's on the right wing. They're starting in defence all in white. You can look there. I'm going to tell you what's going on out here on the court. Two star players. But on the court, it is in defence, all in white, Varder. And it is Cupid from the right wing. It is Makeda in the right back. It is Abudovic. They've gone 5-1. Abudovic was brilliant at this yesterday. Morais has gone number two. And out in the left wing is Timur Dibirov. Two star players. Well, they've been, they were brilliant, both of them, yesterday. Dibirov is on the left wing. And it is Sterbik in goal. But playing from left to right in the navy blue with the sort of dark red trim down the middle is Paris. You just saw a picture there of the coaches, Noka and Gonzalez. And there's Lars. Marcus was the first referee. And Paris start with Omayer in goal on the left wing. Well, it's exactly what we expected. It is their best team they've put on the court. They're going to win this. They're, I mean, they're going out to win this. It is Uwe Gensheimer, Hansen, Karabadic, Remeli, Abelo, and Luka Karabadic, and the crowd are whistling already. So they have decided they're supporting Varder. Hansen, Hansen. Oh, it's a poor ball. Bit of pressure already. Will they go for the fast break? Well, Timur Dubarov is not stopping. Plays it to Makeda. Makeda out to Shishkarev. Shishkarev slows it down. Plays it back to Makeda. Makeda tells Shishkarev to stay. Makeda is uh, playing in the right back. Sindrich is on. And outside him, it is Borazan. They've gone for the power. And maybe that's why they've gone for Makeda out there. Soften up that defence, particularly Mikkel Hansen, who is... A good defender, but maybe at this level, not good enough. No sign of Mulgaard, no change from the attack to defence for Paris. But with Luka Karabatic and Nikola Karabatic in that centre there, they are strong. They change 5-1 back to a 6-0. Follow Borazan. Was it Borazan? It was. Goes up for the shot. Marais was on the line. Didn't get any chance. Ball goes wide. Karabatic breaks it. Remelis already in the ball. Goes one against one. Ball back to Karabatic. Behind the back. Shot. He's hit. He's down. It's saved by Sterbik. And the referee says, enough of that to the Portuguese. He gives the referee two thumbs up. And uh, Raul is having a word with him, explaining something he wanted him to do. Well, they've opened up the middle already, and uh, Hansen is there, but uh, doesn't quite play the ball right now. It's Dabalo, gets it out to the wing, but it's stolen by Abudovic. Hansen there played the wrong ball, but uh, who am I to say? I'm not standing out there, but uh, brought everything back into the defence. They've gone from the 5-1. Kanyelias had followed them in, and Shishkarev does a job on Abalo, and it's a nine-meter ball, and Kanyelias is ba back out again. Remeli with the ball. Here comes Luka Karabatic on the wraparound. Now Nikola Karabatic tries to make his way in. Remeli doesn't need him. He steps up and shoots and scores. And it's 1-0 to nil and he's off and Sapancic is on. And here's the... Well, there wasn't even a need for a block because nobody put pressure on Remeli for the shot. French fans are happy. Number one. First goal of the game is Remeli. Nedim. 21 years of age, Sindrich, Borazan, oh, down he goes, oh, that was very awkward, that's a two-minute suspension, is it for Luka Karabatic or Nikola Karabatic, I didn't see which one it was, but it was, it, it was like he made a back for him, and what, it was Luka Karabatic, when he goes up in the air, he goes out on him there, and he hits him in the air, and he's no balance left, and Borison goes down very heavily. And I think the reason why the referee's given is because he doesn't take care of the player in the air. And he's got to bring him down. It's there. Knocks him. Oh, that's terrible. And maybe he's lucky he lands on his left shoulder because if he lands on his right shoulder there, he could be in a lot of trouble. Borison took some punishment yesterday as well. The ice pack was on him quite a bit. So now they've Kanyelia's playing in that... Uh, in that... Uh, 
left wing position. They're going double line, Stoilov and Morais. Canelias, lovely pass. He likes this pass. It's Duchabayev playing with him. Duchabayev goes for a shot, no need. It's blocked by Stabancic. And then uh, normally Canelias makes this pass either to the line or straight across, and there's a gap straight through. Will he get it this time? Tries it again. Move against Simer. Comes out this time to pressure him. Arms around the neck from Mikkel Hansen. Comes out again. 126 left on the power play. 322 gone in the game. Stoilov making the block. What will uh, Dujabayev do? Plays it into Stoilov. Stoilov gets it. It's a penalty, says the referee. And Stoilov is down holding his head. And enough, says the referee. Step away. A wry smile on the face of uh, Noka Sergorusic. Well, he's the meat in the sandwich, isn't he? Karabatic gets him, and then Abelo gets him. It's not the best ball, but he fights for it, wins it, gets a slap in the head for his troubles there, and then goes down. Ivan Cupic steps forward to take the penalty. And still 117 left on the uh, power play. Cupic versus Omeyer, and he scores it. One to one. And he's straight off, and uh, Makeda is on at the defence. Canelias is out high. It's just got it back in the right wing after the penalty. It's an empty goal. Paris going six against six here. Nielsen is on the line in place of Luka Karabaric. Makes himself big in there. Abudovic is trying to keep an eye on him, as is Morais. And look at the way they, they narrow the playing field, Paris. They bring players over. from the far side. Hansen goes up, oh, he's inside. Yeah, I think the referee's right, he just lands inside the six meter line. It's just a toenail, but it's enough. And the ball was inside, here you go. Just as he makes this landing here, I think you see it. Oh no, he doesn't. Well, looked like he did. I think he might have just, I think he might have been just outside. Lucky call for Varder. Dujabayev now, Maurice. Uh, Blocking on that side, and Duchabayev goes for it, scores it, 2-1 to one they lead. And the power play is over now, but uh, it's been good to Varder. Two goals, one penalty, one shot. And you see, Mikael Hansen at this level, you don't really want to win against one with someone like Duchabayev, which is why I'm surprised that Molgard is not coming on, but uh, maybe they don't want to make too many changes, Paris, upset their rhythm. Remeli. Oh, great save. He didn't know what he wanted to do there. He didn't know what he wanted to do, Remily. He was looking like, I'm going to go high, then he decided to go low. Sterbrick read it all the way. In the meantime, the rebound was inside from Varder. Ball is back with Paris again, and it's back with Nikola Karabatic. Hansen, Karabatic, Remily. Luka Karabatic back on the court now. L reverse switch again, and through the legs. It's the second time they've tried it. And the first time it's worked. And Nikola Karabatic gets it through the legs of Alfred Sterbik. Now, Dibirov with the ball. Sindrich. But again, like yesterday, changes. And uh, any flow is gone from Varder's game. The only thing you can say about Varder is they do try to play it quickly once their attack is on. Borazon back on after that hefty bang he took on the shoulder. Facing Stepancic. The centre block is the Karabatic boys against Morais. Now Sindrich, he doesn't knock Luka Karabatic out of the way. That's the second time Luka Karabatic has done that. Watch him. Luka Sindrich goes in to make the block and Karabatic shovels him out of the way. Tries it again. Sindrich, oh, held up by Nikola Karabatic. Referees have decided uh, it's just a free throw. Makeda, what can he do? Almost free, the ball in is poor. Great defence, I have to say, from uh, Paris, but the referee has deemed it uh, illegal, and there you see why. He's got his arm around his neck, and he gets a yellow card for his troubles. Sindrich starts it again to Borozan, back to Sindrich, to Makeda. Borozan to Sindrich. He's gone, he's gone, you know. It's a penalty, correct decision. 
Abalo was saying no, no, but Abalo was inside. And Stepancic beaten one against one. That is always going to be an area that they'll attack. And there you see, Abalo's inside. He shouldn't be complaining. But Stepancic is the problem because he doesn't have the footwork to stop Sindric. And he's left one against one. They will attack there all day, whether it's Remeli or whether it's Stepancic, because that is the weakness for Paris. They might actually be better off bringing Molgaard into that position and then really shoring up the defence there because Stepancic will get two minutes or, or just miss the player. Cupic steps forward, facing Scoff this time, and he uh, second goal for him, second penalty, and this time it's a nice easy one under the legs. Scott won't thank, thank him for that. 3 to 2. Karabaric uh, marshalling the troops and Kanyelias out high. Kanyelias isn't fast enough maybe to play this 5 1. They go for another switch, Kanyelias is beaten again, but they get away with it. Karabaric hits as he goes through. Floor wipers called on. Good defence, Morais, I have to say there. He took a battering yesterday, Nikola Karabaric. I'll tell you, Vesprem made sure that he wasn't in the game at all, and he took some hits. Hansen now, one against one with Abudovic. Marais, well, something went, I was travelling against uh, Remeli. Dimirov breaks it, they're not going to stop this time. He goes alone, saved by Omayer. Rush of blood to the head, I think uh, Timur wanted a goal in the final four, decided that was the chance. Hansen, Hansen, through, great save, Stervik. Great save, Stervik. Makeda breaks it. We've got a quick game now. Kanyelias waits. Makeda back to Makeda. Makeda goes for a shot. He's nailed on the way through. Falls down on his back. Referees say calm. Well, they don't want to be sending players off willy-nilly at the start, but this is a push in the air. No. Good defence, but it is a foul. Good defence. Whoa. Well, I don't think it's the fault of the defender there, but rather the balance of uh, Makeda. Morais with the ball in the nine meter line. Sindrich waiting. Borozan outside him. Morais stays this side. They're gonna they're gonna attempt his uh, is it a, an overlap? No, he stays back in and looked at blocking. No, here he comes now. And Borozan follows the ball. And Sindrich is one against one again against Stepancic, but he plays it back, but he's still there. Now he goes. No, back inside. Sindrich, Borozan, Makeda. Almost looks a bit Paris-like. Ball, ball, ball! So super goal, soft hands all the way. The way they brought that ball back. Hansen breaks it. Out to him again, Simer. Save, rebound. Inside, says the referee from Abelo. Ball breaks, can't see it. No, I can't. Kenyas, Sindrich, Sindrich. Oh, he tried to be too clever. He could have gone on his own. Maybe got a foul. The way it is, the ball goes over the sideline. That was some goal by Varder, but some break again by, look at the speed of those hands. Abalo has no chance. I mean, the ball literally touches Sindrich and it's gone. Shook the shovel pass. Makeda gets hit in the way through at the nine meters. It's coming out to the nine meter for uh, a free throw. Maris has it, four to two, 10, 12, gone already. Sindrich. Dibirov. What are they going to try here? Dibirov with the ball, tries to go, tries to shoot. Gets held up by Karabaric.
stays over the far side. Deep it off. Look at the fight into the line. Moraes and Luka Karabatic. Up goes Borazan. Save. Rebound. Shishkarev. Clever. And gets a little shove and uh, makes the most of it. Brings the ball out to the nine minute line. No hand for passive play yet. Sindrich. Borazan. Sindrich. Borazan. Oh, baller in the corner. No, comes to Makeda. Now to Borazan. Now the hand is up a passive play. Shishkarev has to do something. Borazan has to do something. The shot is there. It's still up for passive play. Makeda. Shot. Save. Block. Two men on the ground. Ball breaks. Hansen. Hansen. It's a tough. It's a, it's a fast game already. Gensheimer. Hansen. The defense is back in place. Abudovic is not on. He is on. He's moving Borazan over. He wants to play against Karabatic in there in the middle. Remeli one on one with Borazan. The ball comes now to Hansen. Hansen loses it. Shishkarev is gone. Shishkarev is gone. He's only Remeli to beat. Doesn't fancy it. Borazan. Shishkarev scores. Oh, I thought they'd made a hames of it. But they brought it back. Palace has broken it. First goal, Shishkarev. Remeli. Remeli winning his one. Held up by Moraes. I have to say, Moraes is doing a great job in there. Number two. Oh my goodness me, team timeout, Paris losing by three to Werner, five to two, who would have thunk it? Da muss man attackieren, da muss man Wurf suchen. Besondere von halb links, halb rechts. Da muss man attackieren. Du hast einen Uzi auf. Pass ich schon, Kerstu Wanye, Sega, Kino Lavaio, Kerstu Wanye, Beck, Kerstu Wanye, Beck. Du hast einen Beck, du hast einen Beck, du hast einen Beck, du hast einen Beck. Well, there she is, Mel C. Congratulations. Madame, that was a, a fantastic performance. More attacking to the gap, looking for good shots. That's what uh, Noka Sedarusic has told his team. Thank you for that, Carson, my German translator for the day. Yeah, he's right, more attacking to the gap. I mean, it's not necessary for the Varder team to move anything except laterally at the moment because there isn't that hit. Everybody's maybe afraid to make the mistake. And Hansen is great for going to the gap, so is Karabatic. Remeli is more of a setup guy, as is Gensheimer. He's only on the end of the plays. He can't do it for you. Let's have a little look and see what happened. No change from Paris. Luka Karabatic hasn't been in the game yet. Early days, early days. 11.55 gone in the first half. He just joined us. Paris in navy blue from left to right. Varder in white. Hansen. Remeli, second line gone in. Now Karabatic does exactly what his coach told him. And what happens? Makeda's got him. And good play from Kanellas as well. Abudovic staying in the middle again there. Keeps an eye. Kanellas just steps back into the gap, watching everything that's going on. Hansen goes up. Hansen scores. And that's the problem for me with Kanellas. He might see what's going on, but he doesn't come out and hit him in that number one. It's up to him there. Look. He gives him a little nudge, but it's not enough. Great goal, Hansen. You cannot give Hansen that kind of room. Five to three. First goal of the game for Hansen. 50% Tarpard Sterbeck, three saves from six. Omayer, 43%, three saves from seven. Five to three down. Well, they've given attack a foul against that. That is not a good call. That is not a good call. Karabatic straight to the gap. No. Stops just short. Luka Karabatic being manhandled by Makeda, who goes down. Timeout called. No flopping, says the referee. He's dead right. Luka Karabatic did nothing there. I kept my eye on Makeda to see what was going on. Gensheimer's laughing, and well, he might. And here come the floor wipers. And a bit of music. I often wonder, do the floor wipers uh, sweep in time to the music? You know, I would. It's a good beat. It's a good floor sweeping uh, kind of rhythm, you know? OK, let's get back to the game. Enough of this floor sweeping. Luka Karabatic to Hansen to Nikola to Remeli. 
Gensheimer just stepping out to nine, thinking better. It opens, it opens. Great defense, Moraes. And great defense also from Timur Dimurov, who stepped across, stuck with Remeli like glue because the gap opened up, but in the end, it wasn't there. Nikola Karabatic, Remeli, very tight play ball into Luka. Penalty, says the referee. Got to see it again. I knew they were going to give it, but I, I don't think it was. Ah, uh, hand on the hand on the jersey from Abudovic is enough to give uh, the penalty. I don't know. Not 100% sure about that one, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Duva Gensheimer steps up and he scores. Five to four, it's a one goal game. Two goal turnaround, first goal for Uwe. And again, they come to uh, this side uh, between Remeli and Luka Karabatic. They've studied the tapes, they realize, or between uh, Stepancic and uh, Karabatic, they've studied the tapes, they realize that is an area they can get some glory. Borazan, there it is again, the change of the, the reverse pass to Sindrich, he's one on one again, and he goes through again. And he, I'll tell you, Stepancic is lucky, it's only a free he gives away there. They are going to hit Stepancic every chance they can get with Sindrich. And it's so often you see them use this reverse pass, the reverse switch with Sindrich in the middle. Plays it to Borazan, loses it. Luka Karabatic picks it up. Ball is played to Nikola Karabatic, bounces it into the path of Hansen. Save! What a save! Far too casual! Far too casual! And in the end, off the post, free throw! Oh my goodness me! Far too casual from Hansen, thinking he had the goal scored. And look at Sterbik. And this is the rebound goes to Nikola Karabatic. He's hit. And it comes off the post. This is the save. Well, he was trying to be too clever. And our pad. That's a great save. He was trying to be too clever. Oh, it's, that's genius right there. Oh, they've lost it. Timur Dimirov's on it. He's like a greyhound. Dimirov score! What a save! I had scored coming out of my mouth. And now my air comes up with a save. Equal, if not better, than Sterbik at the other end. Look at this. Dear Lord. Holy mackerel. What a save. 50% for my air. 50% for Sterbik. Oh, it's even better the third time. Oh, the wry smile. Well, if he's thinking I should have scored it, Hansen's thinking exactly the same thing. So they settle into their patterns. Abelow's gone again. And yeah, just caught a little bit out of position there. Following that uh, second line that's going in, let's watch Jabudovic and see what he's, how he's marshalling the middle there. The ball is down over the end line for a corner ball to Paris, which Abelow will take. Abelow and co just taking the speed out of the game ever so slightly. Ball goes to Remeli, it's open in the middle, now it closes. Abudovic just keeping an eye, Kanyelias the same. Karabaric to Abelo. what can Abelo do? Goes alone, no, plays it to Nikola. Nikola, I think it hit his foot there, but there was a foul, says the referee. Clever defending from Varder, making it very, very difficult. Remeli. Karabatic just watching the run, or not Karabatic, Kanyelias just watching the run. Hits the post, comes out. Kanyelias has got it, he's got to look left, he's got to look left. He doesn't, he does. Great, what a ball! Sindrich! Dimonov scores! I thought he delayed it too much. Karabatic is gone, second goal, Dimonov. But second ball from Sindrich that gives him about eight metres on the left wing. Remeli goes, but he's faced by Moraes. I've got to tell you, that wall of white players looks enormous i've got to look at the heights but it just looks huge if they get through they've got to beat uh, sterbik after that but they just look so big remeli held up by abudovic 
he's got to be in the all-star team for the if there's an all-star team for the Velux CHF final four on his on his performance this weekend Abudovic he's, he's got to be there Abalo reverse switch to Karabatic who's then hit by Morais and Timur Dibirov and this is playing into Varner's hands because they're far too compact Paris they're all in the middle Jesper Nielsen comes on now Hansen save penalty Makeda what is he doing if they have a weakness uh, in the right back position oh it's Canelias yeah correct decision my apologies uh, Jorge but uh, if um, if Arda have a weakness it is in the temperament maybe of Makeda and if uh, in his defensive ability there and same on that side for Paris so it's a penalty Move against Heimer versus Sterbik, 6 to 4 the score. Two minutes suspension for Varder after this. As soon as the whistle goes, Makeda needs to get outside the 9 meter line. What is he doing? Against Heimer. Oh, save Sterbik. And Timur Dibarov takes a, a nose dive and gets the free. Oh, look at, look at Gensheimer's face. He's disgusted. Well, Sterbik read that all day, didn't he? Is that their second penalty? And I think the first one, Uwe put it through the legs. No? Put it into the bottom corner, okay. But Sterbik has obviously been doing his uh, homework, saw what, go what goes on, and uh, he was waiting for that shot. You could see it. Okay, empty goal, 6v6 in the attack. Tiberov moves. Borozan still out there in the left back position. His line player is Marcinic, and it's Alex Duchabayev in the right back position. Timeout call for Varder, which gives me a chance to check out the heights of these guys in the wall. Let's listen to what Raul Gonzalez has to say. So I did a little check on the uh, the heights of these players while the timeout was going on. Kanyelias, one meter ninety-eight. Abudovic, two meters two. Makeda, one meter ninety-five. Morais, two meters four. Marcinic, two meters two. Borozan, two meters three. I mean, this is a ginormous team. They're huge, but they're fast. This is the save from Sterbik. Oh, my goodness me. Look at the hang time. And in the end, ah, his arm is too low. He knows where he's going. Borozan, Sindric, Sindric. Empty goal, remember, for Varder due to the two-minute suspension of Kanilias. Dibirov's on his way off. Ball to Sindrich. Oh, wasn't far away. Wasn't far away. Ah, I think he knows that himself. Six to four. Karabatic with the ball. Almost 20 minutes gone in the first half for Emily. Karabatic. Abudovic moving across. He's got a lot of ground to cover there, but big Bihailo Marcinic is beside him. Is he there? He is. Oh, Remeli has blown it. What has he done? Ball to Dibirov. He won't mess up this time. He didn't. What was Remeli doing there? He has all day to pass it or shoot, and he does nothing. Three goals for Dibirov. Yeah, there it is this time. Abalo! And Abalo makes no mistake and has a little look back. He's not happy about something. 7 to 5, first goal for Abalo. Remeli didn't make the mistake that time. Oh, Marcinic did everything he could do, I think. Well, what was Remedy doing? He had Nielsen on the line as well. He had everything. 
That was Dubirov's goal. But it's still only a two-goal game. 2017. Lots of time to go. Velox CHF Final Four, Lanxess Arena, 20,000 fans, and the ones down to my left in black and red haven't stopped singing. They're supporting the team in white today. Alex Dujabayev, oof. No goal. Gensheimer's complaining. Well, they're having, a, they're having words, aren't they? A German and a Spaniard speaking English. I mean, where would you see it? <laughs> Sindrich, Dujabayev, whoop, goes for the shot, but he was, it was almost like he was teeing it up for about a half an hour before he went for it. The power play is over, Sindrich with the ball, to Marcinic, now on to it comes Bolazan, quiet today, out to Dujabayev who goes for the shot, hits the post, good save by Omayer, Omayer breaks it to Nikola Karabatic, Plays it to Hansen. He keeps going. He's at speed. He's at speed. Plays it behind his back to Rema. Uh, to Stepancic. Stepancic is trying to go past Marcinic and Makeda. Can't do either. Look at the size of that defensive wall. And now Canelias comes in in the 5 1. And by the way, after you beat this wall in front of you of white you have a two meter tall goalkeeper waiting a goal who's enormously huge as well sideways so it's it's not an easy thing to score and you can see five goals in 21 minutes paris are discovering that remily one on one with marcinich outside marcinich does okay not the fastest boy in the world but he was big enough to cause a problem abalo faced by dibarov the ball is with Karabatic, Nielsen is in on the line. Lemeli finding some pressure from Kanyelis. Back to. That was good play. That was good play from Remeli. Two goals for Nikola Karabatic, and that was great play from the French. Watch it again. Lovely pass with the wrong hand, and that threw everybody. There. Right handed from the left hander, and Marcin is just too slow. That might be the way these two teams are going to score. Going, especially against the 5 1, they've got to do the reverse switch with the centre player. These guys will do it anyway, just because Sindrich knows he's got the beating of Stepancic and Remeli in that uh, right back position. Sindrich, one on one with Luka Karabatic, back to Borazan. He goes up. Oh my word! He's down again. Well, they're, they're after killing him. Two minutes. Dibirov is going crazy in there. They're being separated. The referees have called on. It's Karabatic is in trouble for the, the shove on him as he takes the shot. He's on his way for two minutes. Dibirov took umbrage. He came over. Referees are coming over to the table to explain what happened. Needs to be a little bit of calm now. Dibirov went crazy there, went straight up to Karabatic to say, hey, oh look, that's a terrible tackle from Nikola Karabatic. That's, and look at look at Dibirov. He is going bananas. They're separating people. And Borozan, he's Mr. Ice Pack again. My goodness me. Power play now for Farder, two goals uh, to the good, eight to six up, empty goal for Paris, they bring on Narcisse in the middle. And he's faced with uh, Canelias, who just cheats a little bit to the right. We know what Daniel Narcisse likes to do, left, come back, there you go, that's what he likes to do. Canelias reads that and gives that one step to the right, says to him, okay, try that, I'm gonna be ready to come back on you, okay? So that's clever play from Canelias. Abalo, oh my goodness me! Oh my goodness me! Where on earth did Abalo score that goal? Sheer instinct. Look at this. He's going nowhere. Oh my goodness. He's falling backwards. How does he do it? I still don't know how he did it. That's incredible. 
Right, they're playing a man up in the uh, attack now. It's only eight to seven. They go for a double line. Duchabayev, Kanyelias, Kanyelias. Oh, nice play. Mikhail Hansen stopped the movement. Now ball goes back to Duchabayev. Ball into the line. He can't call attacker foul for that. Get up, move against Heimer. Great goal, Marcinic. And uh, his first goal of the game, nine to seven. Well, Uwe Gensheimer tried everything to uh, get an attacker foul. He's already inside anyway. So the referee said, whoop. And uh, good goal for Mickey there. I don't know about the celebration there. It was a bit, a bit bizarre. Five and a half minutes to go to half time, nine to seven. Low scoring game. But great defenses, great goalkeepers. Now, did he do it yesterday? Yes, he did. Does the team know he's going to do it? Yes, they do. But can they stop him? No, they can't. Can you yes. Oh! Great goal out of nothing. Just burst into life, Joanne. Great goal for Narcisse. 10 to 8, first goal of the game for Joanne Canellas. Ah, oh, great. Goes the way the goalkeeper thinks it shouldn't go. 18 goals, 25 minutes of handball. Power play is over. Full teams, Nikola Kalabatic goes down and there's three men facing him. And Makeda doesn't need to get involved here. Makeda doesn't need to say anything. This is part of his problem in uh, the way he plays the game. And that's a two minutes for Makeda there. He can't come across leading with his shoulder like that. He can't do that. All right, Nikola makes uh, a little bit of a meal of it at the end. But by the same token, that's two minutes for Makeda for that. 10 to 8, 25, 31. They're out uh, in the, almost like a 4-2 here. Lemeli, Narcisse, one-on-one -on -one with Canelias, loses the ball. Brilliant play, Budovic had the line player all day and the arm free for the interception. Pushes him out again, very tight on that side. Ball back to Nikola Karabatic, goes alone, that's a great goal. Just opened up from third goal for him. 10 to 9. Here it is again. Just opened up. Uh, I'll tell you, Abunovic tries to get around Nielsen, can't do it. And it just gives Karabatic that split second he needs to take a, a shot, bouncing into the far corner. Sterbic can't react. That's a fantastic goal. Actually, the more you see it, the more you realise it's, it's instinctive, but he knows what he's doing. Yeah. 10 to 9, three and a half minutes remaining in the game. It's a 5 1. Karabatic out high. Stepancic not trying to give a run on it to Sindrich. Alex Tujabayev to Borosan. The block is on the far side. Marcinic needs to make a move. He does make a move. Borosan again, great save. Rebound. Oh, well done. Oh, unfortunate. I think it was Makeda tried to knock it out. Couldn't quite get there. They're open on the left hand side. Can they do it? Oh, he plays it into Lucas, Luka Karabatic, and the defence gets back. I'll tell you, that's great counter-attack defending there from Varder. Karabatic, oh, two minutes, and a penalty. Someone's in trouble. Karabatic is down. Marcinic, they'll wait for him to stand up, and it'll be a two-minute suspension. He does take some punishment, Karabatic. Yeah, two-minute suspension. And Karabatic is down, I think he's okay, but that was a serious bang he got from Marcinic. Here it is. Well, Borosan gets him first, and then, check this out. Marcinic gets him second. That's a one-two, isn't it? High and low, as they say in American football. So, penalty, Hansen is going to take it. Oof against Hammer, this is one he's been taken off penalty duty. 10 to 9 to equalize the game. Fakes it, no, he doesn't even fake it, just scores it. Nice one, Mikkel Hansen, second goal for him, 10 and 10. So the lead that uh, Varga had enjoyed the whole game has been slowly wiped out by the, let's say, matter-of-fact style of handball that Paris play. And that's exactly what it is. It's top players being able to do simple things, and they do them well for the most part. And when they need some inspiration, they have Nikola Karabatic 
they have Hansen for that inspiration. So, now Cease is defending. Ball is with Sindrich. Ball is with Alex Dijabai. If they're moving out wider, can Yelis come back? Why did Canellas come back into the space or into the into the crowd? He's one on one on this side. Empty goal. Dibarov stays on. No hand for passive play. Now you see it. He's hitting the air, but he goes behind Sindrich. They do that all the time, and it works to perfection. This is it. The goalkeeper's on. Ball to Narcisse. Ball to Gensheimer. He doesn't fancy it. Back to Narcisse. And for Sindrich, it's the first goal of the game. But let's be honest, he could have had more, but he was unselfish in his passing. Karabatic saves Stervik, and Karabatic goes down again. And well done to the referee. He says, get up to Karabatic, who seems to be spending more of the time on the floor. And have a look at Luka Karabatic there, and his foul on, I think it's Makeda trying to get around him, hand in the face. But in fairness to the referees, they're watching the action. And... Uh, Karabatic goes down, but nothing in that. And there you see Makeda behind him, lying prone on the ground. But they're down a player, and a block from uh, Luka Karabatic on the line could be so important. It's actually, it's Nielsen now. Did they change? Neil, uh, Narcisse Remeli. Well, they've scored so many goals like that this season. Tight, tight, and Remeli coming around. Look, four players inside that left-hand side of the seven-meter line. And it's 11-11. And for Remily, second goal of the game. One minute remaining. Well, Varner are definitely putting it up to this great Paris team. They're not gonna lie down today, that's for sure. Ball is quick, Sindrich, Kanyelias. Duchabayev loses it, stolen by Karabatic. Plays it to Abelo, Sindrich almost wins it out to Stepancic, and it's a goal, and the lead finally for Paris, whose fans go into raptures. One goal for Stepancic, 12-11 to Paris. Good steal, Karabatic. Well, they're going to want to finish off this half with the ball in the hand or one shot. No need for a quick shot here, just calm. Oh, he goes for the shot, it's almost a goal, but they need to be calmer than that. Six seconds, timeout called. Timeout. He's called a team timeout, it's a strange decision with six seconds to go, which means he loses a timeout for the second half now, at key moments in the game. I mean, this is not a key moment, they've uh, six seconds. They can figure something out, one ball, Borazan, score, bang, goal. Well, there's the score. Eight seconds left on the timeout, but both teams are ready. Strange decision from Raul Gonzalez to call it with six seconds remaining. But uh, the water bottles are still in the court, so they're gonna have to uh, start the game again properly. It's bizarre. Accidental? Perhaps not. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say it was. Anyway, Marcinich. Sindrich, Sindrich save, rebound is Paris, time is up in the first half, and great save, and uh, Sindrich went for it, great save by Omeyer. And you wonder why he took a timeout to tell Sindrich he had to take a shot. Well, it seems a waste of a timeout to me, whether he told him he should do it or whether he didn't, whether he had a, another plan. In the end, well, Varda started well, I have to say, and they're well in this game. 
but uh, 29% Sterbic and now 44% Omayer shows that Omayer is coming into the game stronger than Sterbic and at this level you can be sure that uh, goalkeepers are going to be very important there you see it 63% scoring for Paris 52% for Varder but what I will say is that it has been harder for Paris to score than it has for Varder Varder have made a few mistakes Two from two, Abelo, 100%. Karabatic, three from three. That's Nicola, not Luca. And two from five, uh, Mikkel Hansen. But uh, eight saves from 18 is Omayer. On the far side, we have three from five, Dibarov. Two from two, Chupachol, penalties. And then ones all the way along. So not really anybody standing out, apart from maybe Karabatic, who you would expect in a big game like this to really show his class. So the gold medal match, uh, we will be back with you in about uh, 13 and a half minutes time. Make sure you join us again for that. Second half of the gold medal match, Felix EHF Final Four is coming up here live in the Lanxas Arena in Cologne. Well, we rejoin you for the second half only moments away in the Velux EHF Final Four gold medal match. And just as we saw the face of Noka Sedlerusic, 12-11 is team leads. Varda came out of the blocks quickly. We're leading by a good few goals, but uh, Paris has chipped away at that lead. Led by one of the greatest players of his generation, that man there, Nikola Karabatic. And a man who retired recently from international competition, Omayer, has just really risen to the occasion. He's always been a man for the big occasion. Has won this event twice with Kiel. He is absolutely sensational. But I have to say, Varder, considering it's their first time here, have not let themselves down. They're well in this game. One minute, five seconds to go. I'm sure that uh, Raul Gonzalez has had the words he needs to have with his team in the dressing room. Borozan has come in for a lot of uh, heavy treatment today, but he's gotten back up each time. Those fans haven't stopped believing. Neither the French for their team, nor the Macedonians for their. If you've just joined us, it's 12-11 to Paris Saint-Germain. They are playing in the navy blue. The two brothers having a little word with each other. They've been very good together in the defense in the middle there. Varder playing all in white from left to right in the second half. Paris start with Abelo on the right wing. Stepantic in the right back defending. Luka and Nikola, Karabatic in the middle block. Then in the number two, left back position is Narcisse, Uvigen Seimer in the left wing, and it's Omeyer on in the goal. Meanwhile, Stervik does some uh, stretches down in his goal area. Varder has the ball. For the second half, Stoilov is on the line, Sindrich is in the center, Borisan in the left back on the ball. Timur Dibarov with the ball now. Duchabayev in the right back and Shuskarev still on the right wing. Sindrich looks like he's, or Chupic I should say, looks like he's only coming off for penalties. And don't forget, they haven't used Karacic yet. They still have him as a, an ace in the hole. Up, oh, Sindrich. Only a freeze, says the referee, but he does it again. They've, they are hitting that space where Stepancic is. I can't stress it enough. We've seen it time and time again. Duchabayev, Sindric, Borozan. Borozan on the move. Duchabayev plays it to him, but it's back to Borozan. Look at Stepancic out so high on him. Borozan has the ball again, bounces it behind the, to Duchabayev. Duchabayev to Sindric. Sindric bounces inside defending, but uh, doesn't go for the shot. Could have done. His uh, jersey slightly ripped, so all you can see is Ingrich. Duchabayev. Oh, nice ball if you can get it. Lovely ball. Dibarov, what can he do? Spins it! Oh, beautiful goal to start the second half. That's special. Narcisse. Well, I remember back in 2010. Look at this again. In 2010, Tchaikovsky and Medvedi were here, and they were playing the bronze medal match, or they were playing the semi-final, and they were losing pretty badly. 
And in the second half, Dibarov played a Kemper to the right wing, whose name escapes me now. It wasn't Shishkarev. And I remember it so well because I thought they hadn't given up, you know? And when you look at uh, Dibarov there, to put that spin on the ball in such an atmosphere, it's such, I'm not going to say a vital time, but it was important they scored, get it back to 12-12, having been in the lead. Sensational. Sindrich, meanwhile, Remeli had lost the ball. Dibarov broke it, Sindrich tried to break through on this side this time, but it's uh, Karabadic waiting for him and Narcisse waiting for him. Narcisse is inside defending there. Referees don't give a penalty. He wants uh, Borazan moving, Borazan is moving, one against one, no, goes to Sindrich again, goes to Djibayev, they're moving them left and right, Djibayev goes, but it's an attacker foul, says the referee, ball breaks, Narcisse, Narcisse to Stepancic, Stepancic to Narcisse, Narcisse alone, up oh, and scores! Great goal, Air France, second goal of the game for him, 13-12. Well, Hansen is on the bench again. Remember what happened last year? Scores what, nine in the first half and his bench for the second. They lose the semi-final. He's on the bench now. Narcisse is playing. Maybe they're going to keep him uh, for the last 15 minutes. Who knows? Dibirov with the ball. Comes around. Plays it to Dijibayev. Stoilov blocking both sides. Now Stoilov tries to turn. They lose it. Karabadic has it. Plays it to Narcisse. Narcisse has three men around him. He goes alone. Great save, Sterbik. Great save, Sterbik. Out over the sideline. Ball is back in play. Karabadic, but he stands. He waits. He bounces. Super recovery from Varder to get three players back facing uh, Narcisse there. Having lost the ball. Narcisse goes one against one, go 1v1 one one against uh, Borazan. Gets a free for his troubles, it's at the nine metre line, Paris leading by one. Nielsen in on the line. Narcisse in the left back, Dibirov goes out on Karabadic. Remeli needs to go wider. Here comes Abalo. Dibirov steps back in again. Ball to Karabadic who drops it, gets away with it, ball into Nielsen, that's great play but a great save by Sterbik. Great save by Sterbik. Nielsen needed to bury that. Sindrich is gone. He's looking for Borazan. Borazan comes back into the big men. Ball out to Duchabayev, who's not having a great game, it has to be said. Sindrich again. Up he goes. That's a super little goal from a super little player. Stoilov off. Three of them on. Him. Second goal for Sindrich. And they've got to bring it back to the halfway line again. But the speed of the three changes from Varder was incredible. That's a great goal. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Abalo to Remeli to Karabadic. Karabadic being faced by Kanyelias, 13 13, the score. One against one, he's there, but he goes inside. Now the ball to Karabadic, who goes outside, who hits. Who hits. Uh, is it Borozan out there? It is. Good defending. I think uh, Nikola got a little kick in the head as well for his troubles. Ah, completely accidental. Narcisse. Karabadic, Suv against Heimer, takes a bit of punishment from Makeda in there in the line. Referees calm it down, say play the ball. Remeli, Kanyelia still out in the 5-1, Makeda steps out and it steps back, now up goes Narcisse, and it's, uh, well, he, they said he led with the elbow there, Nielsen, the ball breaks, there a man up on this side, Kanyelia slow again, Makeda goes, oh, he's nailed on the way through, nothing, says the referee, nine-metre ball. Well, that's, that's two minutes. Stoilov in on the line, Shishkarev deep on the right wing. Borozan, Sindrich and Duchabayev. Duchabayev needs to get in this game quickly. One from two. As in, remember, he scored seven yesterday. Borozan, Sindrich, Duchabayev steps back again. They're moving this team left and right. But uh, Duchabayev goes for a shot he doesn't need to go for there. He needs to lay the ball off to Borozan who can come in, break in between one and two at speed, like he did yesterday. 
Borosan at the moment. One from five. Stoilov is open. Ah, uh, maybe not. He's a big lump of a guy in there, Stoilov, but I tell you, he can move, he can shift. Sindrich, Borozan turns, loses it, no. Okay. Did you buy F? Oh, he gets a goal out of nothing. That's what he does well. Ball breaks. Luka Karabat is stolen. Alex Dujabayev, he's got to give it. Gives it to Sindrich. Scores! Oh, they've taken a two-goal lead in the blink of an eye. Three goals, Sindrich. A stupid ball lost by one of the Karabatic's. There, it was Nikola. I was almost going to blame Luka because I said it couldn't be Nikola. But it was. And in fairness, Dujabayev unselfishly dinks it off to Sindrich who scores. Well, a goal down, it's been a three-goal turnaround, 15-13. Karabatic, oh, he scored it, that's a peach of a goal. A peach of a goal. Now the game has gone up, four goals for Karabatic. Makeda, Canelias, it's gone up a, it's gone up a gear in speed. Dibirov scores! Well, they're Five for him, the trading goals at a rate of knots at the moment. Now he's one on one. No, now it's two on two. Now they play the Karabatic who slows it down. They won't like this fast game. They're going for an extra player. Seven on six. Empty goal. What are we what's going on in this game? Seven minutes gone in the seven minutes gone in the second half, and he's going seven v six. Hansen's on and place in Narcis. Are they trying to throw the game? What are they doing? There's no need for this. Well, they obviously know something we don't know. Well, Borosan is lucky to get away with that there. He really is. He steps out, stops it with his foot. Hansen, they won't want to lose this ball. It's an open goal. Hansen, Karabatic, goes for a shot, scores. Quick ball is needed, oh my ear is on. Five goals for Karabatic. 99k, boom. Well, actually, I know it was a good goal. The, the gap had opened up five from five is 100%. Well, Noka goes seven on six after seven and a half minutes, takes a chance. Well, just shows you fortune favors the brave. That's what they say. Oh, Stoilov makes the move. Sindrich has it, but it's on! Oh my god, he's a tank! Ball breaks, Karabatic, second goal, Borosan. Karabatic hit by Sindrich on the way through. Well, well, that could have been two minutes for Sindrich as well. I mean, let's call it the way it is for both sides. He grabs Karabatic's arm on the way through, and they've gone seven on six again. What? I'm sorry. What is he doing? Because one mistake leaves the ball, the goal open down the other end. Stepancic, Karabatic. Hansen, Hansen, Karabatic hits the foot of Shishkarev. Referees don't see it. It's the ball for Varder. And it's going in. They're lucky. I think Varder are lucky to get away with it. I think it hit someone's foot on the way through. Dujabayev is told to sit down by Lars. So, are they still empty goal? They are still empty goal. Double line. 7v6, oh, it didn't hit his correct decision from the referee. Correct decision, well spotted. But then the correct decision for the throw in into the sideline too. Stepancic, Karabatic, line switch, two lines on this side. No, back in the middle again. Hansen, Hansen, Stepancic, shot, score! They need to get off, Stepancic is off. They're all off, no one knows who's going on. Molgard is on, eventually. Action replay shows a great shot from the Croat for his second goal in the game. Ah, oh, super goal. And 7v6 seven, seven works for them. And yet it's his fingertips away from getting that. Well, that's relief on that face. Duchabayev, Sindrich, Borosan, Sindrich, Duchabayev, Sindrich. Molgard hits him, oh, nice switch. Oh, Got to do better than that. Got to do better than that. One goal lead. Molgard, Karabatic, they're going to keep going. Molgard stolen. Shishkarev, read it. Shishkarev, 
Can he do it? Yes, he can. Second goal of the game and a great interception. He read it like a book at the library. Two goals for him. I'll tell you now, Varder has done their homework. You can see it. Well, that was a nice shot of uh, Raul Gonzalez. Just imagine last year, Talent Uchibayev wins the Champions League with Kielce. No one expects it. And his former assistant coach could win it this year with a team no one expected. Nielsen, no one home. Hansen, shot, score, and he gets off. And still they haven't managed to figure out it's 7v6 and get the ball to the centre quickly. Here it is again, Hansen, and again over Canellas. I'll tell you, Sturbeck's not far from that. He's not far from that. But it must be difficult to figure out who, who am I supposed to be marking, who do I step out on. 7v6, 18-17. Here comes Stoilov, Duchabayev, Luka Karabatic high, Sindrich, Borozan, oh, Borozan almost dropped it. Stepancic almost got it from him, ball to Duchabayev, steps again, ball to Borozan, Borozan comes back inside, back to Duchabayev. Uh, passive play is being called by the referee, one pass, with five left. Ah, oh, great ball! Oh, they've called attacker foul for the block by Sindrich on uh, Luka Karabatic, you never see that called. You never see that called. But it's the right decision. Oh, but you never see it called, but it's absolutely bang on the right decision. 7v6 again. 18-17, in Paris leading. Remily taking some water on the bench. Nielsen with the ball. Passes it to Hansen. Hansen now to Karabatic. Save! It's open! What will they do? They shoot long, they score! What is going on with Paris? Why do you need to play 7v6 so early in a game? And it was just waiting to happen. The last time, Hansen was only seconds away, and our man, Ilya Budovic, gets his first goal in the Champions League Final Four. And over all the season, his fourth. Well, Nikola Karabatic is off now. There's still an empty goal. It's Narcisse. Hansen. Stepancic. Hansen. Narcisse. Oh, he doesn't know what to do. Siskarev again. Oh, my goodness me. What is going on? Third goal, Shishkarev. If I'm the... If I'm... It, is, it, it does hit his foot. But still, game has got to go on. Why on earth are you playing 7v6 at this, at this early stage? Because you're just asking for trouble. Now cease. Canelias hits the punches. Referees say calm down, it's a nine minute ball. You are just asking for trouble when you do this. Yes, I could understand the last five minutes if you need two goals, perhaps. And, you know, the questions have to be asked. Why does a coach do this? Hand is passive play now. Defence is all in the middle. And look at look at Abelo and uh, Uwe Gensheimer. They're all alone wide. And the ball is where Varder is strong. And we talked already earlier today how big they are. OK, they got a bit of luck on the football in the last one, but that's just good defending. 2017, Varder must be wondering who blew on the dice this morning. Passive play. Now Cease tries to play it out. Running out of ideas. Running out of ideas, Paris here. The question you have to ask yourself is, how can it be passive play? How can passive play get called on you on 7v6? Now Shishkarev gets two minutes for running across the uh, free throw there. I think the referee's right there, actually. You kind of think to yourself, it's just stupidity from Shishkarev there. Nah, he's not really interfering that much, but the referee is 100% right. 
There's no need for it. It's passive play. Now, it's five, and it's 6v5. And by more look than design, it might just work out for uh, Noka Sedorusic here. Ball is with Hansen, Hansen shoots, Hansen scores. Fourth goal for him. Sterbik needs to stop that, he's not far away from it though. 2018. And for all their good play, Varder, and for all their little bit of luck, and the fact that a coach decides to play 7v6 against them, there's still only two goals in the lead. Chupic is on now on the right wing in place of Suskarov, of course. Empty goal, and Chupic comes on the run. Ball is back with Dujabayev, now with Sindic, now with Dujabayev. Luka Karabadic calling his defenders. Borazan, Dujabayev handles up a pass of play. Sindic goes alone, he's hauled down, and he presses up, gets up. 58 seconds left on the power play. Well, he has Stepanchic all day and all night, that's for sure. Borazan, Sindrich, Sindrich bounces, tries to go again. Oh, he's hit around the neck by Hansen. Hansen's in trouble. And now Molgard and McKenna are at, at each other's. Now they're all smiles. But I'll tell you now, Hansen's on his way off here. Great decision by the referee. And Sindrich is down in a bit of a heap. I'll tell you what, he tore, he tore at him there, Hansen. It was lazy. And Sindrich is quick. Sindrich is quick. Look at it again. Hansen gets him there. The referees had uh, no option but to uh, call the two minutes, and if I'm not mistaken, no, it's a free throw. I thought everybody was coming out of the penalty spot there, but no, it's just a free throw. Makeda and Mulgaard having words with each other, but there was a bit of, bit of handbags before that. So, 52 seconds left on the Varner suspension. Empty goal, they're playing 6v5 now. Two line players, as they like to play. Duchabayev, Kanyelias, off the crossbar. That's a good bit of defending that time from Stepanchic. I think just got a little hit on uh, Kanyelias on the way through. But, uh, oh, it was Luka Karabadic got across. Great defending from Luka Karabadic because he has to move, that's great, didn't give up the ghost. And it's little moments like that that change games, that keep you in a game. Karabaric, Remeli uh, Stepancic, he's hit on the way through, and someone's in trouble here. Stepancic is down, two minutes for Abudovic, quite right as well. And I think the ball was going wide anyway. Just knocks him off balance on the non-shooting shoulder. And as he's turning, there. Well, he gets a bit of chest too. So the Serb has to sit out uh, two minutes. 13 seconds left on the original two-minute suspension for Shishkarev. And of course, Paris Aman down as well. So what are they going to do? They've got an empty goal. 6 v 4 Narcisse, Gensheimer doesn't fancy it. Narcisse, set, oh, unfortunate, but they all count. Narcisse got away with it there, third goal for him. I think it hit uh, a bit like the Alilovic goal earlier, hits two defenders on the way through and just sneaks past the goalkeeper.
Kutubayev. Empty goal now for Varder. 5v5, Stoilov tries to turn and can't manage it. Stoilov and uh, Marcinic in there, now Shishkarov is on. Marcinic making a nuisance of himself, Kanyelias looks, waits, finds Duchibayev. Great save, Omayer, great save, Omayer. Sternbik makes his way back on, just about. And all the changes, Stoilov got on, just about. Makeda, I think, just about got on in the right substitute area. Omayer read that so well. Empty goal, Paris. People are going to start thinking there's a guy called Empty Goal playing. No, he's back on. Narcisse, Karabaric, Stepancic, Stepancic, Narcisse. One goal down, Paris. Karabaric wants Jesper Nielsen in the middle. Ball to Uwe Gensheimer. Uwe Gensheimer, oh, stolen by Dimarov. That was brilliant. That's as good as a goal. Uwe Gensheimer getting a bit too clever. Dimarov read it, watch it again. Look at Dimarov, reads it, gets it, passes it out. That's that's brilliant play. That's brilliant play. That's as good as a goal right there. Because they were in trouble. Looks to me all the suspensions are over now. Yeah, it's the play of the game, for sure. At a, at a crucial moment. Varder haven't scored in five minutes now. Oh, nice pass. Oh, Kanyelas, what is Shishkarov doing there? Why does he move? Two on one, Gensheimer's in trouble. Kanyelas is right-handed, dinks it out to Shishkarov, and it's a goal, and Shishkarov moves off the wing. Sindrich, no chance. What is Shishkarov doing there? Unbelievable. At that level, after the play by Dibirov, Kanyelas. Goes alone. Oh, that's a brilliant goal! Oh, Joan Kanyelias, Molgard. Second goal for him. Karabadic, Molgard, Karabadic, Stepancic, Timur Dibirov out in the 5 1. Narcisse is on. Luka Karabadic is uh, on the line. Luka, Luka Valo. And Sindric getting involved now. There's a bit of niggle in the game, you can feel it. Ten minutes and a half to go. This is crunch time. This is where championships are made. Luke Abalo. Abalo. Now sees. Great save. Sternberg. Down deep to his right. The old man. Well, I shouldn't really say it. But I'm way at the speed he was down. Look at the height of Narcisse. Great shot. Oh, super save. Oh, that's a great save. Oh, that's a great save. Hand and foot. Sindrich, Dibirov. Ball to Duchabayev. Stoilov makes the block. Here comes Joan Kanyelias. Well, he started losing the run of himself. Move against Heimer, fakes one. Gives it back to Karabadic. Karabadic, what does he do? Plays it to Abalo. Abalo nearly falls over his own feet. That's brilliant! That's brilliant! Luke Abalo from nothing. Third goal, almost fell over his own shoelaces, and somehow, like the goal in the first half, he's going backwards. The man's a genius. 21-20, and we have a final here. If you've just joined us, it's just hotting up. 21-20, Varder, Macedonia in the lead by a goal. Paris Saint-Germain, 20, but not letting go, a bit like Vesprent did to them yesterday. Kanyelias, Duchabayev is one on one but goes the wrong way. Kanyelias again is hit. Oh, he's hitting the shoulder, nothing. Molgard says, what are you like? Get up, I only touched you in the shoulder. Molgard getting involved. He says it's the face. It's not the face. Absolutely not. Good decision, referees. And Henrik Molgard. Has a word with Stoilov. Stoilov taking up two guys there. Sindric with Sabancic. Timur Dibirov. Joan Kanyelias is alone again. Great save, but foul. Shishkarov took the rebound anyway. 21-21. And it is 21-20. I meant 21-21 in time. Now it's 21-24. So there you go. Kanyelias, the shot, but the foul. 
and it's going to be a nine meter ball and the floor wipers are on look at Omayer he is just like a cat waiting to pounce Stoyed off again no sign of Karacic yet Joan Canellas Sindrich Sindrich Stoyle off they've lost it they've lost it Kalabanic breaks it finds him again time it has to be it is 21 21 over again Simon's second goal of the game Hansen fist in the air oh great defending Luka Karabatic that's the second time he's put his body in the way you know and made a really key moment interception for the team and Uwe well if you want anyone to finish it for you you want Uwe there on the left wing that's for sure Moraes comes in place of Stoilov Sindrich to Juan Canellas now Dujibayev what can he do crunch time and the Paris team are not letting go even Stevens goes for a crazy shot again Alex Dujibayev foul said the referee nine meter ball Dujibayev again Moraes blocking in there up he goes no passes it Canellas Sindrich Dujabayev, he comes back inside, ball to Moraes, he's got to be, save Omayer, the big man for the big occasion, oh, he may have retired from the French national team, but there's life in the old dog yet, great ball, great ball, good turn by Moraes, but he cannot finish it, Dujabayev, with seven minutes remaining, goes alone, and there's no need for it, and another save by Omayer, which brings him now, to 38%, Sterbik 28%, Nassis 21 21. Timeout call, Paris, and with six, seven minutes, six minutes odd left in the game, we can take a little break and listen to what Noka Serverusa has to say. <laughs> Weil nach zwei Minuten hätte mir nur einer geblieben. Wir haben noch einen. Kurze, kurze Pause. Wir spielen jetzt nochmal. So normal mit sechs. Nicht mit sieben, mit sechs. Denk dran. Okay, the timeouts are over. Paris just coming to the boil, much as they did in the first half. Starting off pretty badly. In the meantime, Noka said the Russo just taking the yellow card for whatever he said to the referees. So Paris, remember what happened there. They ended up winning the first half by a goal, having been behind the whole time. And uh, that 76 gave Varga a sniff, but Paris coming back into it, and now Hansen, a crunch time is back in the game. 5 1 from Varder. Karabatic. Hansen. Stepancic. Hansen. Hansen. Shot is saved. And Borazan does a good job. When you think Borazan is only 23, he's very mature in his play. Good defense. Karabatic. Hansen. Oh, they've stolen it again! They've stolen it again! Keep it off! They needed that! They needed that! And Shishkarev does it one side, Dimirov does it the other. Six goals for him. Didn't score. What is what is Hansen doing there? I mean, Varda don't need any help to win the game. Varda just clinging to this lead again. 
Stepancic goes one against one, but he faces, he's faced with Abudovic and with Borozan. Abalo waits, finds Karabaric is hit in the face, but the referee says nothing more than a nine-meter ball. Well, Abudovic has got his hands all over his face. Hansen's called ashore after that pass. I'll tell you, he's no respecter of uh, legend, is he, Noka? I mean, if you do, like, you make one mistake, you're gone. He got the hook, Narcisse is on. To be honest, Narcisse was playing really well. Karabaric to Narcisse, Stepancic, Stepancic, Narcisse, one on one with Kanyelias. Goes past him, but he's taking steps. Correct decision again by the referees to see that at this level of a game. And at this key moment, five minutes, 14 seconds remaining. Hands up for passive play. Karabaric, ball in, he's lost it. Recovered by uh, Narcisse, but he's not going anywhere. Great defending. That's what I call the scramble defense from uh, Varner. It it's not in any book you'll ever read on handball. It's just do whatever you need to do. Well, the crowd likes Sweet Caroline anyway, but they've seen a great game here today. I have to say they've seen a great game. Some super saves, some super goals, some great defending, some bizarre decisions, not from the referees, but from the coaching staff. Stepancic, up, goes again. Oh, it's terrible. Goalkeeper's ball, they're gonna calm this one down. Abalo is sniffing around, looking for the ball. Ooh. Oh, and he's still chasing it. And, and Sterbik threw it out to uh, Dibarov, and Dibarov was a bit surprised to get it. Stepancic, oh, that's a terrible shot, great defending again. Goalkeeper in the right place. I have to be honest and say that the uh, right backs today haven't filled me with uh, confidence. Duchabayev has been pretty poor in uh, his position today. Same with Stepancic, same with Remeli. Sindrich. Borazan, Moraes on the line, Sindrich, Borazan! What a goal by the youngster! Paris break it, third goal for him, Karabatic is hit by Moraes, who by the way, Kiel released, and he looks a player. He looks a big, strong defensive player. Moraes, yeah, Rogério, Rogério. Port well, he's not Portuguese, he speaks Portuguese, he's Brazilian, Narcisse. Nikola Karabaric, Remeli now. Nikola Karabaric, Narcis. And they want Luka moving, Luka does move, and uh, Abunovic had uh, Narcis covered. Only three and a half minutes remaining, two goals down. Two goals down, Narcis. One on one with Abunovic. Now a ball to Karabaric, over the top, bizarre, can you believe it? If you need a goal, you put it in Nico's hands, and he does that. That was a good ball too. It opened up. Oh, it opened up. Kanyelis and Abunovic do a great job following in. Yeah. It's still, it's still you'd expect it on target from him. Sindrich, Borazan, Borazan goes around, timeout. No. Referees want them all outside. It's when they blow that whistle, you kind of think to yourself, something's happening. It, everybody outside the six meter line, they are. Morais, three minutes remaining, two goals in it. Can they hold on? Sindrich, Borozan, Borozan plays it to uh, Dujabayev to Sindrich. The man, oh, great save! Great save from uh, Omayer. Omayer brings it back inside, and uh, Karabaric breaks it out to Remeli. To Karabaric, this game is not over by a long shot. Two and a half minutes remaining. Abelo one on one with Sindrich, can't get past him. Plays it out to Remeli. Referees blow the whistle to stop the game and start it again. Nielsen on the far side. Karabaric, Remeli, Karabaric. Look at Dimirov, out on Kara. Now Remeli goes, oh, it's a super goal! Oh my goodness! He can't believe it. Nadim Remeli. Third goal of the game. No way he should score this, but he does. Bolozan just lets him go, 
and it goes across the goalkeeper. Oh, look at Raul Gonzalez, can't believe it. Still leading by one. Two minutes, just under two minutes remaining. We're in the red zone now. We are in the red zone. Duchovayev, Sindrich goes one-on-one -on -one with Bolgard. Now Duchovayev, ball to Borazan, Borazan to Sindrich, great handball. Ah, yes, yes, no, says the referee, nine metres, nine metres. Hold it, says the referee's calm. One and a half minutes remaining, timeout called. Referees uh, acknowledge the tables, acknowledge them. But we all know so much can happen in one and a half minutes of handball. I, I, I'm nervous. Sindrich! Is it two minutes and more? Two minutes and more! Luka Karabonic! Oh, you won't see him again in the game! He can't believe it! And when you need it the most, they put the ball in the hands of Luka Sindrich. They put the ball in the hands of the wizard. And you see what he does. Referees are having a discussion. Is it nine metres? Is it a penalty? Nine metres, says the referee. But uh, it's a power play for Varder for the rest of the game. Now, if Paris can dig themselves out of this hole, that will be as sensational as Kielsa's win last year. Because right now, Varder hold all the cards. They can run this clock. You know, leave, <coughs> leave Paris no time. Borosan, Duchabayev, ball to the wing, Dimirov's inside, no, he's missed it! Oh my goodness me! Oh my goodness me! Dimirov misses it! Oh! And well they might, and well they might have their hands in their towels. That could have been the game. So empty goal, 6v6, the crowd is giving Paris the bird. And that's what they love, especially players like Karabatic. Now sees one against one, doesn't go anywhere. 30 seconds left in the game. They're now playing for overtime. That's what Paris are playing for. They're thinking. One goal, it's overtime. We close, we close the door. Oh my goodness me, just watching that again, I realized it was a save from Omayer. What a save at a vital time. He's at 38%, Sterbik at 27%. Right, what are they going to do here? Nassis, one against one, in the right back position. Simple switch between uh, Karabaric and Remeli on that side. Parallel pass, and it's 1v1 against Makeda. Let's wait and see. With the block for Nielsen on the inside of uh, Abudovic. Ball is in play. 35 sec 25 seconds remaining. No, they go for the carousel. Now, here goes Abalo on the other side. Karabaric, he's missed it. It's a free throw, though. And the time is running, but timeout called. 13 seconds remaining. And Karabaric wanted to be the hero there. But it's simple handball. They're a player down. He's five from six today. In fairness, he's done it. But at this stage, you've got to get someone open. You've got to get someone open. Or else Varder will be champions of Europe. I have a feeling there's more drama today. There's more twists and turns. Karabatic, reverse pass now sees. What a goal! Seven seconds remaining. Ball breaks quickly. 
Time out cold. What is the coach doing? There was no one home. Oh my God, what has he done? No one was home. He called a timeout. Nassis, it was the guy, what we said. Set him up, let him score. Well, sometimes you wonder, are those timeout cards the worst thing a coach can have? Because that ball was going in. It was an empty goal situation. I don't think uh, Paris had gotten themselves back in time. Question is, how long is that? Seven seconds? Oh my God, the roof will come off this place at the score. Seven seconds. Harry Saint-Germain playing a player down. And here we go. Six. Dujabayev. Out to the wing. Two pitch. He scored! He scored! They've won! It was so simple in the end! It was so simple in the end! Give the ball to Ivan Cupic! Let him score! It was so simple in the end! One pass! Cupic is a back-to-back a -back champion! Cupic wins it with Kielsa! Wins it with Varder! The minnows! The minnows from Macedonia! have just made a nation's day. Two million people have watched them at home. And look at Joan Cagliellas, came to Hamburg a year after their victory. Never won it with Kiel. Moves to Varder. No one gives them a sniff. And it just shows. You're better off coming to the Velox EHF Final Four as a complete underdog. Chances are you'll win. Hamburg. Flensburg, Kielce, now Varda. And that's the second time the team from Group B has won the Velox EHF Final Four with the new group phase. And then you look at Group A and you think, oh, it's got Barcelona, West Brem, it's got Kiel, it's got Flensburg, it's got uh, Paris Saint-Germain, so on. You look at Group B and you say, oh, they only have Seged, they only have Brian. Obviously, it's a tough group. And I tell you one thing, that man, with seven seconds left, took a timeout. And he said, they're going to wait for a switch and a this and a that. Let's go direct. One ball, and I'll tell you, Cupic, Cupic. Can you believe that man? Only has four fingers. Look at it. Look at look at Dujabayev, the speed. One against one. No chance. And look at that for a finish. Omer got a touch on it. Dujabayev, that is, that is, you know what? Handball is a simple game. It's a simple game. One against one, two against one, you've got a chance. You've got to feel sorry for Paris, but in my opinion, and this is only my opinion, they shot themselves in the foot when they played seven against six at an early stage of the second half. They gave three goals, three easy goals away for interceptions and so on, and empty goals, and it was too much to make up. But look at, look at that face there, Abudovic. He's been there in the bad times, you know. He's been there in the bad times, the losses. The time they were eliminated with the penalty from uh, Flensburg. Paris team. Paris team, well, they're full of stars, but they made some basic errors, I think, in that game. And they need to... They need to figure out that right back position. I think they've got uh, the Norwegian guy coming next season, but he doesn't play. He plays in the left back. They need to they need to shore up that right back position for sure. Everywhere else they look strong, they look physical. I feel sorry for people like Mikkel Hansen, who hasn't uh, who hasn't done it yet, you know. But look at look at Ivan Cupic. Look at look at those guys from Varder. I mean, that is just. 
There's something magical about the Velux HF Final Four. It's magical because it doesn't matter what your name is, it doesn't matter what history you come with, it doesn't matter what budget you come with. Sometimes on the day, one team just wants it more, and they win it. And today, Varda wanted it more. You look at Abudovic throwing himself, you know, at those final passes. You look at Canella scoring a goal out of nothing. You look at Sindrich, 60 minutes he's played today. And the same yesterday. And Duchupayev, who all game has made a pig's ear of it, let's be honest. Well, not a pig's ear, but he's made a lot of mistakes. Gives the one pass that wins the game. And Cupic, who hasn't played the whole game, coach puts the ball in his hand. Coach puts the ball in his hand, he wins the game for them. Look at, look at that face. Uh, Ivan, I, I like him a lot, you know. He's 31 years of age, but he actually looks like he's about 12, right? Look at Juan Canellas, how happy that man is. And look, Karabaric could have won it for the fourth different team he's played for. But in the end, his five from six weren't enough. Neither were Hansen's four from seven, Narcisse's four from six. And you look back at key plays. Uwe Gensheimer's ball across to the right wing. Dibaroff intercepts. Hansen's ball there. Dibaroff intercepts. The Shishkarov interception. The empty goal goals, you know? And you look at all of those things, and it just shows you all those little small pieces add up to a win. And, uh, yeah, they were all easy goals. And i got to say... People will argue, people will say, but those referees today were excellent in very difficult circumstances. I thought they got the majority of all the difficult decisions pretty much correct. And may I say, all the referees this weekend, the couple from the Czech Republic, the boys from Macedonia, and the earlier on today, the boys from Croatia. Congratulations to the EF, uh, EHF uh, referees program because really, <clears throat> You, cannot, uh, you can't argue with the way the games are refereed. And when you lose by a goal, as just about all games, all the, all the really important games this weekend were all decided by a goal, you can't pinpoint anything that said, this made the difference. Paris, I'm sure, will look back and say that ball hit the foot of Abudovic or Makeda, and they got the goal, but uh, in the end, in the end, it's... Uh, I, I can't put it into words except to say there's some, it's a mythology now. It's mythic, it's magical, it's miraculous. Because you look and you think Kiel won it the first year, Barcelona won it the second year, Kiel won it the third year, you think big teams win here. Then Hamburg come, they win. Flensburg come, they win. Barcelona, that 2015 team was amazing. They were always gonna win. Then you look, Kielsa come and win, Varda come and win. There's something about this arena and this event that you cannot judge who's going to do it in the end. And for all those people watching all over the world, this Varda team really deserved it. And not only that, but it's as we said earlier, Talent Tuchibayev won it last year, and his former assistant coach, the man who was with him so many years, Raul Gonzalez, wins it the second year, the year after. It's pretty... It's a nice little story going on there. I'm writing a book, Carson, about handball. I'm putting all these little facts away in my head. I figure I'll sell five copies somewhere in the world, you know? My mother will buy five copies. Well, you know, it's uh, another show at the end. I think Mel C might be uh, performing for us again, which is great. You know, yesterday's games weren't great. They were tight, but they weren't great as a spectacle. That was a great, that was a great game. That was a great game. It had everything you want to see. Mistakes by coaches, mistakes by players, super goals, super saves, great defense, great attack, awareness of where the space is, awareness of where the weakness was. You know, everything you, everything you look for in top level handball. And let's be honest here, it's difficult to score against these guys that are so good. 24-23, 47 goals, 60 minutes of handball. Incredible. 38% on my ear at the end. Only 26% stairbit. It's incredible, and they still win the game. Shows Vardar uh, took a lot more shots, right? 
Right, here she is again, Melanie C, to uh, round it off before the medal, medal ceremony. She was excellent earlier, the former Spice Girl. She's going to be even better now. Look at that for a video screen. Sit back, relax, enjoy. New life from Melanie C uh, performing live in the Lanxas Arena, the former Spice Girl, and uh, it was great to hear her, it was great uh, to see her. She looks absolutely fantastic, doesn't look like she's aged a day since those, uh, well, was it be the late 90s when, uh, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I want to see the uh, medal ceremony because um, Varner have just defied all expectation. They were confident quietly in themselves. But I think now everyone has seen that Lucas Sindrich is a is a great player. He's an absolutely wonderful player. Well, I want to say that these guys down here have been absolutely fantastic in uh, keeping the crowd entertained the whole time. This, the man who plays the tunes and the, the other man who mentions all the names. And the fans were brilliant today. The, the atmosphere was absolutely incredible in the arena. So, uh, Barcelona getting a thank you for their participation in the Velox so HF Final Four. The and then, the of course, uh, the Vesprem team who came third, and the fans of Vesprem delighted for their little mention. Momi Rilic really says to me, Tom, I have the collection now. I have the gold, the silver, and the bronze from the Velox HF Final Four. I said, that's not so bad, eh? And, and uh, then you have Paris. 
who ultimately lost 24-23. Omayer, 38% saves. He had 13 saves from 34. That's incredible. Gensheimer, 2 from 4, quiet today. Stepanic, 2 from 3. Remeli, 3 from 5. Abelo, 3 from 3. Two of the most amazing goals I've ever seen in my life from Abelo. Four from seven, Hansen, not his best day. Nassis, four from six, five from six from Karabadic, and it still wasn't enough. 23 goals. Arpad Sterbik at 26%, incredible. And Arpad Sterbik is the most valuable player today because at key moments he's uh, made the saves. You know, he's got to be. Because at key moments, that, there was one save uh, towards the end where he gets down so deep, so quick, and it's key moments like that that goalkeepers save it for you. If, if, if Paris had won, you'd give it to Thierry Omeyer because he was also sensational today. Let's look along the line now, and it's two from six to Tobias for a really bad game until that last pass. And even the way he ran down the court, he looked it looked strange, right? But he made the right uh, decision. Dibarov, six from nine and two serious plays. Uh, Shashkarov, three from three and one serious play. Then you have three from seven, Borozan, not great. Two from four, Kanyelias, Sindrich, three from six. But Sindrich ran that game. He ran that whole game. It was absolutely brilliant to watch. Well, I think that uh, very soon the teams will be introduced for their medals. We are getting ready. We're in the weights. The players obviously are uh, in their dressing room, maybe being consoled if they've lost, celebrating if they've won, of course. Are you sure? They're going to come through the arch on the Can far side there. Velux CHF Final Four 2017. So it's the Paris team that is going to be introduced first. And we'll take, we'll take our cue from the uh, hall announcers. And it's uh, Narcisse coming first, if I can see in the dark. That's definitely Narcisse. Behind him is uh, Acombre. Then it's Omaier. As they enter the light, they are not happy. Stepancic behind Omeyer. Nikola Karabadic won't add another medal yet. Nielsen, Abalo, Scott, he'll be gone. Barache, Mulgard. That looks like Luka Karabadic, it is indeed. He was great today, Luka Karabadic in defence. He really put his body on the line for his team. Remeli. Uh, Kunku there just uh, high five before him is Dylan Nahi and then Mikkel Hansen last out. Silver medal, it's one up on the bronze. They came here last year and they made third. 2017, it's the silver medal. Only silver by one goal. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, show your appreciation for Marie Saint-Germain. Have Congratulations to Paris, they put on a show this weekend, no doubt about it. They just raised the profile of the game with the level of players that they have. It just makes people sit up and take notice. The brand of Paris Saint-Germain, incredible. Congratulations to them and also con commiserations because it's not easy to lose a final. And uh, the president of the European Handball Federation comes on to present the medals. It's Mikkel Wieder along with uh, Predrag from uh, Montenegro, uh, the vice president, who's uh, handing out the medals, and uh, handshakes all around to the support staff, to the coaching staff, the physiotherapists, and to the star players. It's uh, Stepancic receiving his medal, it's uh, Nikola Karabadic receiving his medal, and uh, there must be a fan in there who's uh, been chosen to uh, shake hands with people and give them their medals. Well, it's not easy to receive a silver medal. It's not easy to be all smiles and, you know, look happy when you're second, especially when you're a team like this. I think, you know, even though Vardar might have been disappointed with second, they would have been delighted to have gotten this far. But to actually win it is, is unbelievable. Well, there's some pretty grim faces around there. Uwe Gensheimer might have scored uh, well over the 110 mark in, uh, in terms of goals, but in the end, it all means nothing in terms of the gold medal because it is not Paris Saint-Germain, a lot of people's favorites coming into uh, this tournament that uh, will go home with the gold medal. 
today they were one goal shy of the team that beat them. 24-23 Varder. That was the final score, which means that uh, Barcelona have to settle for the silver medal. A great team, a really great team. Gensheimer, Remeli, Luka Karabatic, Kunkud, Henrik Molgaard, Bache, Acombre, Nikola Karabatic, Jesper Nielsen, Scott, Omeyer, Narcisse, Abelo. If I've forgotten anybody, I apologize. Stefan Olsen, assistant coach, Noka Servarusic. And uh, that is it. I don't even think Noka Servarusic is up on the uh, platform. Is he there? I can't see him. Maybe he's standing behind somebody. Well, as I said, it's been a pleasure to see them this season. But commiserations. Still a great achievement, the silver medal. When you consider the amount of games you have to play, and there was no Kaserovic, of course. I just see him coming down now. Which means all that's left is for the team that won it to be announced. And if you look at this team at the start of the season, you're not saying this team is in the final four. You're not saying this team is in the final four. And you're certainly not saying this team is going to win the final four. Look at it. Listen to the names. Milic, Stoilov, Ferreira, released by Kiel. Makeda came from a team in Spain that probably nobody's heard of, you know? Dereven, knee injury. Karacic doesn't play. Duchabayev, good player. Abudovic. I mean, he's step by step over the last four or five years, he's really learned his trade. Kanyelias came from Kiel, wasn't playing well. Sindrich came from Medellin because they ran out of money. Cupic came from Kielce, and you're thinking, is he on his pension? He's done enough, he's 30 something, he's going to the sun. But you see there, Shishkarev, Borozan, young guy. Marcinic, young guy. When you read that list, do you think to yourself, this is a, a, a Velox CHF Final Four champions team? You certainly don't. Here's the MVP of the tournament. It's uh, Arpad Sterbik, and he will be presented, I'm sure, with uh, something. Now he goes up first to get his uh, MVP trophy of the final. Oh, it's a nice little trophy. Congratulations. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice. Looks like the World Cup. Yeah. Not the Jules Rimet, the other one, the next one. That's nice. Congratulations, Arpad. Well deserved. He, in the end, had uh, eight saves from 31 shots, but... Everyone can, but that defense worked so hard in front of him. My own personal opinion is Sindrich deserves that today. The MVP, I think you you don't you don't disagree with Sterbik getting it because of key moments he made key saves. But I think Sindrich was just over the two days was just exceptional. So now the gold medalists are introduced. It's H.C. Varder of Macedonia from Skopje, and look who leads them out. It is Stoilov who comes out with the Macedonian flag flying from his neck. And the Varder fans are going crazy. They are so happy. Dibirov, seven years after he first appeared, is the complete winger now. It's just incredible. And uh, Canelias, of course, has to wear... No, Makeda's wearing the Spanish flag. Actually, now Angelov goes up on the stage with them, even though he wasn't in the squad today. Moraes has the Brazilian flag. There's flags all over the place. Everyone's got a flag in their bag. Marcinic takes the sword and the shield. Look at that. A French, no, it's a Croatian flag. What am I saying a French flag for? Karacic has a Croatian flag. David Davis from Spain, Raul Gonzalez from Spain, incredible. Shishkara from Russia, they're from everywhere on this team. Ferreira, Portuguese, Makeda, Spanish. Juan Canelias from Spain, but Catalan. I mean, it's Sindrich also from Croatia. Overlooked, by the way, by a lot of Croatian teams. He, oh, they've, and there's Sergei Samsonenko, puts a lot of money into men's and women's handball. Let's not forget the Varda women's team got to the final of the women's uh, final four this season. Chip Mix final four and just fell at the last hurdle. 
But in the Vailux CHF Final Four, no such luck. These guys from Varder, it is what it, the Hall announcer just said, it, what a story. Two years ago, or was it three, they lose out to Flensburg on a penalty, on away goals. And you think to yourself, is that the chance gone? And then they lose out in the final, the last date, the last date, the next couple of years, they can't quite make the step. And then suddenly they make the step up. They get here and they defy all expectation. It's amazing. And they hold up that Macedonian flag with pride. Two million people. I mean, these guys never have to buy dinner again in Skopje. I'm telling you, they'll be invited. They'll be eating for free for life, drinking for... They'll never have to... After dinner speeches, they'll be 80 years of age and people will still be paying to hear the story of the time a team from Macedonia went to the Velux CHF final. They're crazy for handball over there. They're absolutely crazy for handball over there. Alex Tuchabayev, what a way to sign off. He goes to a team full of guys who've won the Velux CHF final four and now he can say, well, I've done it too, guys, just so you know. Joins his dad next year. You know, before all is said and done, I know everybody's been thanked in the stadium, but I have to say well done to EHF Marketing and the EHF for an amazing event once again, to all the teams that took part in the Velux EHF Champions League this season, to the four teams here today and yesterday, Paris, Vestman, Barcelona and Varda, to all the volunteers, you know, the guys who drive the cars, the girls who drive the cars, who get us from A to B, the security, the people from the office who work so hard, all the Snapchat they do, all the Facebook Live they do, all the social media around this event now, how much bigger it's gotten from that first year. It's been, it's, it's just amazing to see. They keep the fans so involved, they really do. The referees, the table officials, everybody, they all deserve to be thanked. It's absolutely brilliant. And <clears throat> the TV, the TV people that are here who show us the game and the directors who show us the game in such a great way, it's, uh, it's, it's magnificent how it's advanced, how clear it is, those action replays, those really slow, slow motions, everything's wonderful. But this moment here now is for H.C. Varder because very, very shortly, that trophy that every handball player wants to win is going to be presented to Stoli Stoilov. The ballerina, the size of a bear, that's what he is. He's the ballerina, the size of a bear. But just before that, Mel C sings the classic and bad mistakes. Here's the trophy. It's going to Varder, Velux. It's going to Stoyanche Stoilov. Varder. Velux CHF Champions League Champions 2017. Get that trophy, big man. Hold it high. Congratulations, Varder. Congratulations, Macedonia. Well done. And we will see you again soon. Oh, they are delighted. I'm going to leave you with the song. I'm going to leave you with the celebration for myself, Tom O'Brannigan, and all of us here at EHF TV. It's goodbye for now. But do stay tuned. I'm sure we'll get some interviews later.
Normal, right, Ivan? You come here, you win uh, Champions Leagues. Yeah, a little bit normal, <laughs> but it's not normal. <laughs> to ex exact same uh, games. I Yesterday, to today. But in the end, I think that we play really great handball this year. We win everybody in our group, we win everybody in this group. So I think at the end we deserve it. And of course, we are very happy because this is big stuff for the club, for the nation, for the... Macedonia, of course, for our players, but I only can say congratulations to all my teammates, coaching staff, and everybody who is involved in this in this year. So I'm very happy, very proud to be one of these guys. He's very calm. This is your first. You're delighted, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm very happy now. I'm proud of my guy, of my uh, boys. I don't know. We don't have the time to prepare this game, but. Uh, Till the end, everything is good, everything is fine, and now we will see everything. Ivan, you scored the winning goal. I mean, it's the little guys again. You scored the winning goal. But, I mean, there was some passion in that team today. There was some heart. How difficult was it? It's not difficult because you don't think about it. If you, if you, if you, if you... <laughs> oh, that's nice. Wait, wait, wait. Davor, Davor, I don't know which is it. You, are you the trophy or is this the trophy? Come here. Tell <laughs> us. We are the trophy. You're <laughs> both the trophy. Tell us what this means to Varda Handball Club. This is the history for Macedonia for the Handball Varda. I you, don't have a voice anymore. Are you, are you a little bit excited there? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah! This is like your comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, congratulations, Thank guys. Much, yeah. Ivan, tell us. The heart, the passion in this team. It's just unbelievable. It was there. Sindrich, another Croatian boy. Unbelievable. All across the team. It was just it was just all about heart. Yeah, I told you yesterday that we can put aside tactic because it's it's final and tactic is one stuff, but if you don't have passion, if you don't have heart, if you not playing a team handball, if you're not uh, all in, you cannot win it. And we today 
show that we can be all in. And of course, it's not great handball today. Finals is always, you expect a yeah, little yeah, bit it's... more. But at the end, I think that we show everything that we had and uh, we gave everything, gave everything. the guys. I want to ask Igor a question. Igor, you've been very important all year. Today, not much of a role. You're sitting on the bench. I mean, are you, are you closing your eyes? Are like you? you. Like yeah, you. Oh, <laughs> I have no voice. Yeah, I was very nervous. Yeah. And when I see Quiz on the court. Yeah, you put the you put the ball in Ivan's hand. Everything, That's everything it, isn't it? Everything on him. I put Listen, everything on him. We're delighted for you. It's an absolutely yeah. fantastic achievement. Thank you well done, much. boys. Thank you, man. Thank you, Igor. It's great to see you. And so you well. Friday that we drink beer Sunday. You did. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Okay. Thank Take care. Thanks for that. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, now we're complete. We start the pre post-match press conference following the Velux EHF Champions League final, which was won by HC Varda, 24-23 against Paris Saint-Germain, 12-11 at half time. Introduce my guests, first of all on my right, um, I have Noka Sederuzic and Daniel Narcis from Paris, and Raul Gonzalez and Stajancha Stoilov from um, Varda. We start, of course, with the winning coach, um, how big will the party be at home tonight? Okay. Good night. First of all, I want to say congratulations to Paris, to the players, to the coach, because I think they did a very good job this season, all seasons. And of course, I want to say congratulations about my players, because I think they are the best of the world. Uh, I am proud, uh, because I can train this player, and I, I don't want to speak about the game because maybe it's not the moment. I only want to say thank you to the players, to the club, to all people in Macedonia that is watching this game. And I want to dedicate, of course, for everybody this trophy, to my family, especially to my best friend, Jota Gonzalez, because when I have problems, I always call him, and for me, it's very important to say this, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, Noka, your comments on the game? As my glückwunsch for Varda, to the Sieg. Yeah, that's what we expected. A knapp Spiel with viel Kampf. Man hat gesehen, dass beide Mannschaften unbedingt gewinnen wollten. Wir haben leider äh, für so ein Finale 
für so ein schweren, knappes Spiel zu viele technische Fehler gemacht. Haben in der zweiten Halbzeit, glaube ich, vier Bälle direkt in die Hände von Wada gespielt, wo wir direkt bestraft wurden. Und in meinen Augen hat das, äh, das Spiel entschieden. Uh, first of all, I have to say congratulations to Wada. It was a tight game. Uh, there was a lot of fighting. You could see that both, both teams wanted to win, especially then in the second half. We made too many mistakes. We gave too many balls to our opponents, and that was easy games for them, and that's it. Okay. No, first? No. Um, Stojan, should, um, what does this mean for, to you personally and to your teammates? First of all, I have to say that I'm very proud to be captain of this team. The, the guy showed character and courage throughout all season, and today was our day. This is the best thing for, for the club, for the city, and for all country. Okay. And what does it mean for your teammates? What does it mean for your fans? That you've won. Did you expect to win this trophy at the start of the season? We didn't just come here to play. We come here to win it. We spoke about it every day, and like I said, we had our chances, and we get that. Okay, thank you. C congratulations. Daniel, um, bitterly disappointing for your team. What's the feeling like in the, in the locker room now? Uh, first, I must say uh, congratulations for uh, Vardar and the players. They have uh, a beautiful weekend. Uh, they make two games with a goal in the last second. And I don't, I don't know if um, uh, you can see that. Uh, all the year, but uh, they do that today and yesterday. Of course, we are disappointed. Uh, when uh, when you lose a game, is when you lose a final, it's always difficult. Um, it's difficult to to say something. It's difficult to find the words for the for the players because we work all the years. Uh, we work this weekend uh, to try to to give our best and. Uh, and um, and uh, you and you and you don't win. Uh, this is sport. In in the final, you have a team who who have fun, and uh, the other one uh, cry. And uh, that's that's sport. Uh, that's beautiful. Uh, but uh, on our side, we uh, I'm also um, not happy. But uh, we make. Uh, a good job. Uh, we do better than uh, last year, and um, now in front of us uh, we have a small time to to um, to, to relax. And uh, next year we will be fight to to be one more time here. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the floor? That's not the case. Congratulations to Varda, and thank you very much. Enjoy the party.